Hello and welcome to the final race of this 2021 Orienteering World Cup. We will end after two days in the forest with a sprint relay here in Cortina d'Ampezzo, which is one of the uh, host cities or towns for the Winter Olympics in 2026 coming up. But first of all, it will hold another major sporting event, the World Cup final in Orienteering. And it should be a lot of fun and fast race uh, around around the town here uh, with uh, pretty good conditions for racing today. We will, of course, see the teams of four go head to head. First, the women racing, then men, then another man, and then finally ending with the women. And there's, we've got 50 teams on the start line today. It's going to be a fantastic race, hopefully, and multiple teams per nation. So we've got four Swiss teams, four Swedish teams. You could well see some of those be featuring up towards the top. Let's have a look a little bit at the... Um, the kind of expected winning times. We've got 15 minutes per leg. We've got 21 and 25 controls. Of course, there are going to be forkings, gafflings here to be able to split up the runners. And it's not until they get to that, the very, very final stage of the last leg that they'll all have run the same distance. But Jonas, do you want to talk us through the map and the courses? Mm -hmm. And uh, what we see here is the men and the women's course in the same map. We see that there is a short loop for the men's course, so for the second and third leg in the beginning, and then they come together again at control six. We also see that there are quite many forkings here uh, at almost every second control. We have one, then we go to this hockey rink uh, where we will have a passage with some pictures from there at 15. The men's and the women's course split up again and they come together here at the 18th control again. Uh, another forking here towards the arena passage. From here there is a common last loop, so no forkings at all at the last loop here through the village or the city, whatever you want to call it. So in terms of in terms of the map there, how would you make, what do you expect this this race is going to look like as we look at the team standings across the World Cup? What, what do we expect to see? Well, we see many forkings, but they're not... I, I don't expect them to split them up very much. They don't differ too much in distance. Um, sometimes they're tricky because you have the same way out from the control, uh, but then you have different... Uh, control points, which usually they try to, the course planners try to separate the runners already at the control. It's not all the time here that you have to do it. Um, so I guess that there will be quite a tight race and that the differences will mostly be the individual differences of the runners. Yeah, I don't think these four kings are going to yeah, split people up in terms of time. It's going to force them to go different ways and, and crucially force people to have to run their own race, have to do their own orienteering. And that is what makes this sprint relay so challenging. On paper, it could look like an easy course, but it's completely different scenario when you're racing head to head with some of the others and it just can go uh, very, it can get very interesting very quickly. So we'll look through the teams. Sweden first with Alexanderson on the first leg, von Krusenfreiner, Svensk and Hagström. Switzerland in second with Paolo Gross as their uh, runner first leg, then Hadorn, Kibertz and Simona Abersold. Norway, they've got Victoria Hester, Bjornstad, Heimdall, Foster, Kasper Foster, multiple um, well, World Cup winner, Andrina Benjaminsen as well. Uh, Finland have really pretty strong team, Vera Klemetinen, Ruo Hola, Niemi and Hayu. Uh, Czech Republic there with Kosova, Krivda, Glonek and Janoshikova. They're women on that team particularly strong. And I think those kind of five of the main nations we're going to be looking at. Um, and we, what we don't see in this lineup is the um, the second teams. You can see Hannah. Uh, we can see some of the kind of Hannah Lundberg in the back there. Some of the other, the kind of second and even third teams, for the likes of Switzerland and Sweden, are going to be, uh, I think, featuring up there quite closely. But it's just great to see so many teams fielded here at this World Cup final in Italy, and that's fantastic. That just. You can see so many runners ready to make their way out there. I feel that was 
Almost a little bit of a false start, but though it be are, and they are straight off out into the terrain. And the first control is a forked control. So they've got uh, two different options to go for, and this might split them up. We can't quite see just how they did there, but you can see we've got A and B, and they may well go different ways to those two controls. They'll be dodging uh, tourists, and um, they'll be dodging just people having having their coffee, having their lunch, I think, around here and mm -hmm. gotta try and just keep calm and, and in amongst these all these fifty women starting here. Mm, and you see that they are not really splitting up. It's not an I mean it would be a good option to continue if have control B, you could have continued there and then take the passage um, between the buildings, but it, I mean, you don't lose a lot of time if you pass control A, and the, that's a bit what I mentioned before. Uh, the course planner, they didn't really uh, put the course in a way that it's always necessary to split up. And you can see, of course, it's a little bit slower. Um, if you take control B, then you sh there's an option, then you should maybe continue uh, in running direction around to control 2 again and not back out. Uh, so that might be a reason why many of the runners with Control B here lost a little bit of time. Yep, of course, that is a little bit further the way they've gone. And then a common mm -hmm. control to control number three, which is where we'll get our first uh, split time as well. Now and we can see they're splitting up. Yeah, and something you can see already now is that Swedish teams, both of the Swedish teams, the second team with Hanna Lundberg and also the first Swedish team, they take the lead here directly. And I think it's a very crucial leg, the first leg here, because um, if you take the, the differences in the teams, the first, for example, the first Swedish team and the first Swiss team, I think the biggest difference is on the first leg. So it will be very important for Switzerland to keep uh, contact here as long as possible. Yeah, we can see there's a clear tactic, I think, from particularly the first Swedish team and maybe the second one. You know, they're putting their strongest runners out first with Tove Alexanderson, you know, sprint world champion. That's a really decisive, um, you know, move there for them for them to do that and one that we've actually seen them do quite a lot recently in a aiming to get the gap. But yeah, there's not that many who will be able to keep up and maybe this is where maybe where Switzerland are missing a couple of their good runners, their good sprinters in Eleanor Ross and Sabina Hausfurt, both of whom are kind of injured at the moment. Yeah, Elena Ross had an injury in the yeah, in one of the sprint trainings, she had a crash with Joey Hadorn, so he, he would have been one of the teammates today. They knocked themselves <laughs> and themselves out uh, in a the training there, so, so she has a fracture and she's out for several weeks. Uh, very unfortunate for Switzerland, of course, because Elena Rose has been an important part of this team for yeah many, many years now. See here yeah, that Hannah Lund. More likely, yeah. yeah. You see here that Hannah Lund, but he, she opened that race in a very strong manner. Um, she's never been running the sprint relay before because we we never had this situation that several teams per nation were allowed. We had it at the European Champs and the World Championships, the last sprint relays, and then of course there you only have one team per nation. So she never really made it to the first team. Uh, it's the first appearance here for her she's doing very well on this first leg although she just so kind far. of cut down those steps and allowed alexanderson to get ahead mm. there um on her way to uh no, control number five and actually allowed some of the others to catch up i think we've also got grace malloy up there for the british team it currently i think in that second place if the gps is all accurate kosova up there as well from czech republic um, and those kind of those first three now maybe seem to have got a gap um, as they go into this common control here. And I have a feeling this this leg they're not going to really split up in terms of going the two ways around oh, exactly. this out of bounds section. I think it's a good choice actually to stick together. Go the shorter route. 
Yeah, that's the, that first group of three seems to have definitely made a little bit of a gap. Here they are. Hannah and Bo, the first. Hove Alexanderson cutting up there. Grace Malloy uh, sticking more along the road. Mm, there you can see the con one of the controls to the left. Hannah Lund very punching there. And you see that Tuve uh, Alexanderson chose to go around the are hockey arena. You see it in the background here to the right. There would have been a possibility to go to the left as well. I think it's a good option though. Yeah, I think Grace Malloy must have gone the other way. So we'll see when they get to control eight uh, how that's fared. And we'll see them a lot around this um, ice hockey stadium. We'll actually see them go inside the ice hockey stadium for the next control. We've got Svetlana Miranova of Russia up there as well. We've got Switzerland the second too. Swiss team, Serena Kibberts. Uh, Ridnaya also of Russia. Guess there was the first Swiss team here to the left. Mm -hmm. Gross is the, there. The gap at the first radio control was 22 seconds. Now they turn into this hockey arena here. The blue carpet is laid out for them for this control. So we'll get our yeah. split times here. So Sweden won. Is in is in first Sweden too. Hannah Lundberg just three seconds behind, but uh, Lundberg was leading. Now there's a bit of a gap, and Grace Malloy may be losing a bit of time on that route choice into control number eight. And uh, we've got Anna Karima from Estonia doing well. Vera Klemetinen from Finland, and the no Sweden three is already up there. Russia two ahead of Russia one. So two with uh, Switzerland. There's Paolo Gross in Switzerland too, so currently 28 seconds back. Denmark quite far back there, 23rd, 36 seconds down. Wait, there we had a crash. Someone's down. But we look back again now with the leader, Alexanderson. And she's just eating more time out of uh, Hannah Lindbergh there. It was three seconds. It's now significantly more than three seconds. You really feel like she's just put her foot on the gas coming out of that, um, out of the stadium. Grace Malloy still in that third spot. I think with Estonia and Karima in fourth. Uh, Biesmo is there as well in fifth. Sweden three. I did ask before this how many Swedish teams will we get in the top five? <laughs> mm, and for the teams here now, it's very important that the gap up to the two Swedish teams isn't growing too much so that they still have eye contact every now and then. Uh, it's very important just for the confidence and f and for the for your run that you see them so that you know that you have st still are in contact once the gap is really open then it's hard it's much harder to not lose a lot of time we see here that they split it up great britain won and czech republic they went to the left of the hockey arena was quite okay at least if you had one of the controls the the one uh, if you didn't have to run up there on the open area on the field then I think it was a good option to go to the left otherwise uh, going around to the right for sure was a good option 
Oh, and that's he where you here? see Alexanderson yeah. taking all the time out of the others. As you see, you come out of that arena passage and you're pretty much hit with a dead end straight away, having to go either left or right. And it was good, very good to go left. And Alexanderson's mm -hmm. done that really well. Would it would have been interesting to see how it's um, how it's printed if on the more map. More teams had done that as well. Yeah, and the, how how it's printed on the map because uh, the map we got, of course, we have all different options. There, it's kind of. Uh, tempting to go the way most of the runners go because it looks a little bit like a passage where you have to run but it it isn't so it's it's also sometimes like the the graphical how they how they print it it's yeah it it has an effect on the runners and and on their decisions if the line is more to the right you're more likely to go to the right even though to the left is maybe better uh, would have been interesting to see that So Switzerland 2 just punching there. And we've seen Grace Malloy for the British team has dropped a few places just on that section, down from third. The Italian team there, 24th currently. Okay, so we now have a look at this uh, little forking we have here. And then you get back into this kind of older part of the town where there are a lot of steps, there's a lot of um, walls in the way. You've got to make sure you take the route properly. We have uh, Swiss team, first team, 34 seconds behind. We have Norway, 33 seconds behind. But it's the situation for them is quite okay anyway because there are many teams between the two Swedish, two leading Swedish teams and uh, their position. So it's still that they have many backs to go uh, to choose to run behind. Would no, be, it would be is a much bit all harder. over the place, but you can kind of yeah. see how the teams are going down, well, the two leading teams going down the stairs now to go in the section of underpasses. We've got that uh, kind of interesting level mapping that we had quite a lot in the World Champs. Um, but certainly now we can see them at 16. And then very, very soon we'll see them running through the arena passage. Again, yeah, I just feel like the GPS is not quite as good in here. Here's uh, Alexanderson, though, and Hannah Lundberg. And I think Lundberg has caught up definitely some time then was compared to what we saw after the... Um, yeah, the, after the, the stadium, gap, after the ice hockey stadium, she's definitely caught up a little bit more time there. Six seconds there, so it, she was two seconds faster in this section. Svetlana Miranova has had a fantastic run for the second Russian team. Rydnaya's up there as well. Malloy caught, catching up a bit. Uh, Lena Strand's done well in this middle section on the fourth also, Swedish team. Also, Switzerland did good there. We're able to catch nine seconds from 34 to 25 seconds behind. Norway still about 30 seconds behind though. They're one of the teams you really want to watch out for, but they are definitely stronger towards the, the latter stage of this race. Of course, they've got Kasper Foster and Juna Benny Minson. Ooh, yes, look at the Emma Biesmo is a lot behind there. The, on the, mm -hmm. the third Swedish team must have seen a mistake. And then these are the two leaders just punching at control 19. Mm, and now the gap is growing again here. The Russian teams have done something very different 
Or at this point, we'll see whether they are still in three and four by the time they get through to 19. But yeah, the gap is huge now at this control. Also, we should see lots punt having just punched in control 19. Now you can but see towards the, the end as well that the <laughs> it's really now where the physical differences are kicking in. Uh, usually it's it's easier to follow, uh, I mean, 10 minutes of uh, very high speed. Many of the runners can follow, but then the last five minutes really make the difference in the sprint race, especially in the sprint relays. You also see that there were different route choices by the two Swedish teams. So let's see here, it's Lina Strand, a good start Marin here. as well, yeah. Loy. Oh, now we have Gross. the special of the Swiss team. So Paolo Gross not had the best start, but managed to work her way up through the field. Okay, so we wait at the handover. Isaac von Krusenfrenner is going to go off now with Tove Alexanderson taking the lead on that first one. We have got Max Petterbema now waiting for Hannah Lumbe, and the gap is nine seconds back to Sweden too. But they're crucially now, they have a big gap on the rest of the field. Nobody able to really keep pace with these three Swedish teams because Lena Strand comes through in third place. And Russia uh, two with Miranova on the first leg into second. Now we have a whole group of them here all the way through to 11th spot. Really big group there. Running strongly, chasing now for the kind of third places at the moment. There's the Czech team. They will be a bit disappointed with being that far down. They've got ambitions for getting in amongst the medals. Maybe not with this team and not quite the strongest. They've not got for Kral. Kral. Um, so I think they, but when their team is at their strongest, they definitely want to be in looking in to be in amongst the medals. And of course we said the, the men have this kind of strange little loop to start off the course where they add a little bit of extra distance extra controls well the loop itself isn't too <laughs> too strange uh, no but we're, loop, but we're not I mean, used to seeing the extra distance added in the men's course at this point like at the no, beginning of the course and it's it's a bit special because it's a totally unforked extra loop so it's uh you have this extra loop here in the beginning and it's a common loop so you have many controls here which are unforked Yeah, and it, I feel it just kind of puts you straight into the orienteering and it just kind mm. of makes it tricky, you it's know, the, from the beginning. It's kind of an advantage here for the men because they see now this passage, they're almost forced to notice that you can mm. run there. And uh, I mean, in the women's, on the women's leg before, you really had to spot this one to get the good route choice later on in the race. hard to see things around control number three exactly where everybody is but now we can mm. definitely see Isaac von Krusenfren extending the lead for um, Sweden one Max Petter Bema still in a very good place for Sweden two we've mm. got Switzerland one in there as well Chris Millard on second leg for the British team Tim Robertson there in a mixed team Yeah, the GPS very unprecise here. I mean, you have many buildings close to each other. It's hard for the GPS device to connect to the satellites. 
we can get but an idea of where they run it, they are running. So the gap was nine seconds then between the top two teams. Max Petterbema will go through, yeah, 11 seconds. So Von Cruz and Ferena making just a little two second gap initially, but Joey Hadorn is working hard for the mm -hmm. Swiss first team. And uh, I think that was Florian Hovald as well. This kind of group here, Guillaume Elias uh, for France, Jens Ronalds and that fourth uh, Swedish team. That whole group kind of working hard then, I think have maybe caught up, like really being pushed on by Joey Hadorn in the lead, kind of catching up a little bit of time now. And then they're just kind of spreading out behind and already you can see, so the Czech team there back in 13th, the Russian team team having had they had a great couple of uh, the two Russian women having great first legs of they're not Russians not being quite so strong in the men's side of things for quite a few years now so not really a surprise to see them dropping back mm, very good start for Joey Hadon here he was able to catch nine seconds or ten seconds even And we saw a lot of them very, very close together at the changeover. I think that mm -hmm. attacking moments from Joey Haddon may, has made them really kind of all spread out again um, behind us. Not everybody's able to keep that really, really quick pace. Norway first team out in Heimdall, 34 seconds behind. It's an okay start, he doesn't lose a lot of time here. And uh, if you look back to the World Championships, there the Norwegian team, they were two minutes behind after two legs and in the end they ended up in second position, only 26 seconds behind, so they can really have an impact on this race later on with Kasper Fosser and Andrine Benjaminsen, so we shouldn't really count them out here. Oh, this is interesting from uh, Isaac von Cruz and mm -hmm. Frenner going the different way and I think there was a little, maybe a little pause there on the corner. I think it's slightly longer going that yeah, way. I don't think it's been too bad, but it is slightly longer. You should go the same way as um, as go via that other control. Mm, and here, interesting now, the route choice to the next control. Are you running to the left of the hockey arena or are you going to the right? I mean, from this control here, ah, it's not going to the right. Mm. Interesting. And it? Joey Haddon, look at there, my gosh, huh? has caught up on the second team. That is really, really aggressive, kind of unsurprisingly aggressive run from Joey mm -hmm. Haddon, who I think is going to want to prove a point after a couple of disappointing and runs, I think, for him over the last couple of days. I think there will be another time loss by Isaac von Cruz and Kwerna because it mm -hmm. wasn't a, g a very good option to go to the left there. He should have gone the same way as Max Peter Beimer and Joey Haddon here. So I guess that they can take over the lead now here, maybe, or at least come very close to the first Swedish team. Here we are. You look have at everybody racing. Is yeah. it? I think so. Yeah, the fourth uh, should be the fourth Swedish team. Yeah, and here we have them. Yep. Very close together now. Oh, so these top three back together now after that root choice error, we think then from Von Cruz and Fuena, but those mm. three all yeah, very close. And yeah, two of yeah. two of them in a row, small mistakes. And now, I mean, Hadon, he caught already half a minute on this leg here after eight minutes of running. And yeah, what what great feedback for uh, Joey Hadorn to see he's not just caught second, he's caught first place as well. And Von Cruz and Fuena now has to kind of keep his head and maybe accept he's made a few route choice mistakes and just kind of keep also, working really hard. That was a very good start for Jens Reynolds. He started um, 24 seconds behind, now it's only 17. There we have Norway. As well. yeah. oh, Norway 28 seconds behind, yeah, 6 seconds.
So yeah, I think that mistake, oh, those couple of mistakes by Isaac von Krusenfreiner has allowed just the rest of the field to kind of mm. close in on him. Not just those li those two chasers now, but the others as well. And he's really trying to keep himself ahead of Joey Haddon here, yeah, making Joey Haddon work really hard. And that's in and exciting to see. That you can see that he has a good speed because there's still two, three meters between them. So it's not the speed, which is the problem here. He had some bad choices. And you also see that Max Peter Beimer, there's a small gap now. And also a change uh, in the leading position. Now Haddon has gone ahead, yes. Although now does this put, does this uh, you know does this race become tactical as they split up and go to to go into the next control? I was about to say, where do you want to be? Do you want to be leading? Do you want to be second? Do you want to well, be chasing? It doesn't really matter because they've just split up because that's well, like, how I guess work. for them it doesn't. I I think it's quite convenient uh, for Hadon to be in the lead because he he knows that he has made good decisions before. Uh, now he sees the runner in front of him. If he's in the lead, he. The choices of Van Cruz and Quana won't affect him. The other way around, I mean, Van Cruz and Quana knows that his decisions weren't the best throughout the course so far, so it can be a good thing for him um, to maybe get some inputs from another runner. And you see here, but he made his own choice, which was very important to this control, of course. Ah, did he choose? Yeah, B. It's going another. Route there, interesting. Sweden too. Mm. Yeah, I would not have expected that from. Uh, yeah, it's maybe not the closest one to the red line. You see that there is a gap opening here as well. It's like. Five, six, seven seconds. Then we have our chasers. So Max Peter Bamers dropped back. Yeah, Max Peter, he? yeah, he loses a lot of time here on this route yeah. choice. Yeah. And you see the gap is growing. There we had him, I guess, back yep. in the picture, running down. So he lost a lot of time here. Gap now seven seconds. Then we have uh, Max Petter oh yeah, Damon. Then here, we nearly forgets to punch the control. Mm -hmm. Tim Robertson's having a great leg. Jens Ronald lost here uh, as well. Lost more than 20 seconds on this route choice. From four seconds behind to 25 seconds behind. Ricardo Rankan with a good uh, second leg. And Norway then, I think, dropping a little bit more time at this point, I think. Uh, dropping back a little bit further, 39 seconds. So we need to keep an eye out on them. Of course, they've got Kasper Fosser on the next leg. And I mean, the, ma the amount of time he was able to catch up in the World Championships was just extraordinary. So we've really got to see how much he can do on this last leg. Then they've got Andrew Benjaminson on... Um, on the fourth and final leg for Norway. And if you've mm -hmm. got B, do you go back down that the steps on the way to you could, I mean, if you have B, you, that's, that's what I mentioned on the first loop, then you, had, you could take this route choice where you have been already on the short loop in the beginning, down the, the, the stairs there, and uh, take this passage. It's a bit harder to see, but I mean, they have been running there um, in the beginning of the course. I guess it's a good option to run like Norway, Switzerland too, and Latvia there, if you have B, of course. But it's hard to say for us because, uh, of course, those uh, steps there downhill, they are slowing you down. You have to turn a lot there to get down. So we don't really see how many times you have to turn around uh, on the Ooh. steps. 
Uh, Hang on, what's happened here from Joey Haddle? He must have done a mistake. Yeah, that was a mistake. Kind of overshooting or something, I don't know, because he had a big lead and now he's three seconds down. And Tim Robertson is only nine seconds down in that third place. So I could not see on the GPS tracking what was going on there for Joey Haddon, but I was very, I thought we'd missed him coming through when we saw um, Von Cruz and Fuerna going through. And But no, we haven't at all. So a mistake mm -hmm. there from Haddon having stretched he out the lead. He lost 10 seconds compared to the last split. I guess he lost a little bit more because the feeling was that he was, uh, that the gap was growing. We have other runners losing time here. The group going to the north. So now we have the feedback. It is slower to go up there. 41 seconds behind now, Norway. Also Switzerland yeah, too, 41 seconds behind. So they lost about six seconds on this route choice. But I mean, they also had different uh, controls, A and B there. The might be that a bit of the time difference was due to this uh, different forkings. But very good run here of uh, Tim Robertson for the mixed team. So he was uh, half a minute behind that start. Yeah, he could end up with the quickest time on this leg. It'd be interesting to Definitely. see. It's a shame that there's, they're the only, Tim Robertson and Toby Scott, the only New Zealanders. Uh, I had Elena Babich from Ukraine on the, the first leg there in that mixed team. Just glad that they can get a chance to do some sprinting. And these are the two leaders back together. And this time, maybe we're cruising for holding off Joe Haddon, just about. Here's Tim Robertson going the other way around. Looks very quick through this point. Doesn't have to turn around either. Max Petter Bema, Sweden two. And now they're really fighting hard to come up this slope here. They've only got a couple of controls that to go. That's the last control and they're gonna hand over now. And we see Matthias Kibert and Emil Svensk. They're both waiting. It's gonna be a really, really close finish Joey had on just edges it handing over to Matthias Kibbert and Emil Svensk and these two oh we've seen such great battles mm. uh, between Sweden and Switzerland on a lot of these sprint relays and here is another one as well uh, Tim Robertson just kind of maybe losing a slight bit of time towards the end but that was fantastic there Sweden two then into second And now we have a bigger gap here. And the big group actually here looks like uh, Heimdall is there. So too is uh, Rudolf Zernis from Latvia. So the Latvians having a fantastic run there. Norway, now watch this, 47 seconds back for Norway. Switzerland two is also there. Great Britain and Sweden four. So 47 seconds is the gap down to Kasper Fossa just starting there. That's really significant. Finland, I think, don't think they've really got their strongest team potentially out here. Maybe disappointing for them back in 10th spot. 108 seconds down. The Czech team also may be quite disappointing for them. 121 down again. They don't have their strongest team with them. Wojciech Kral is not uh, running this competition. And Milos Nikodim is back down in their uh, second team. And I think a lot of the... I, I think actually a lot of the teams here choosing to put some of their younger runners in, in higher up teams, whereas maybe... You know, that younger and rightfully, you know, quicker, they've earned their place to be in those teams. Whereas maybe at a world championships, there is still a, a case for experience counting a lot. So um, a lot of teams still putting a lot of maybe their older runners on their on their teams or certainly maybe European championships for that matters. But the last race of the season, you can give the experience of running in the first team to some of those younger ones, we know there's already you know quite a few people who are not here for, through injury or not traveling here.
Mm, it's so hard to won. see here mm. on the picture yeah. what the gap is between Sweden 1 and Switzerland 1. Uh, it's the uh, it's the area we we know from the earlier legs that the GPS is not very accurate, so we just can get an indication about the routes they are running actually. But in it, so with Matthias Kubert, Emil Svensk going out one second apart, who do you think fares better in this matchup? Well, <laughs> usually I would say it's kind of a pat situation. They're quite uh, equally strong here. Uh, histor uh, yeah, if we look back at, at the earlier races, both of them have been very important for the teams and uh, both of them have had days where it was yeah, better and uh, less good days, but always on a very high level. So sometimes maybe they lost 10 seconds, 12 seconds, but uh, very often they were important parts of the team uh, and able to to catch time and I don't know if we have seen them so many times running out, out almost together. Uh, here we can see though that Kibbutz is able to open a gap. He looks very strong physically. Uh, but we also know that the decisive parts regarding route choices and um, yeah mistakes we have seen in the in the second half of the course. Here we have already Kasper Fosse. Started yeah, it's 47 it's seconds place. behind. Yeah, the feeling is that it's not 47 seconds anymore. Let's see when we get the split times. Well, Sweden 2 with Martin Regborn just going through there was plus 24. Uh, so and Norway was plus 47, so catching up 23 mm -hmm. seconds there already uh, for the Norwegian team and Ralph Street from the British team is also uh, running quite close behind Fosser as well. As we would expect, maybe Toby Scott um, dropping back down quite a few places mm -hmm. after Tim Robertson pulling them up and changing over in third. You can also see but. here that the tail is 15 seconds. It looks like a big gap now between Switzerland and Sweden. And you also see that the gap down to Norway seems to be around 30 seconds. So he was, it was definitely a very good start for Kasper Fosser. If the GPS is right, he was around 15 seconds faster than Kibbutz. And almost half a minute faster than uh, Emil Svensk. But of course, it's very hard to say if the GPS is accurate enough. We will get the times at the next control. Then we know. Yeah, then we'll be able to see just what uh, starts these men have been able to make on this third leg of four. But it looks really as if Norway is getting closer and closer with every step here. Oh. And here we see that Kibbutz is not choosing the best route here. It's about the same as von Cruz and Kuerner before. Of course he has B, so it would be worse if he had uh, control A. But still I think it is... Uh, I mean you run kind of an S shape here because you cross the line here, the red line, at this po point. So there is a little bit of unnecessary distance to go for Kibbutz. Uh, of course, it's not a, a matter of 10 or 15 seconds, but maybe two or three. Almost had, the, yeah, and now he see it's, he's the first one having mm -hmm. this control and then going to the left around. Yeah, I Didn't think that's a really the good decision times. there. Oh, who else is going there? Yeah, Ms. Fence is also going left. Yeah. So but that's not good, sorry, yeah. They needed to go but right. Yeah, I think it's okay if you go all the way around from the beginning. What we have seen before with uh, mm -hmm. Isaac von Cruz and Kuerner is that he first went up and then to the left uh, anyway. So that wasn't a good option. I think it's an okay option uh, or quite a good option to go to the left from the beginning if we had if you had the control in Mil can. Um, so he's definitely not losing... Uh, as much time as from Cruz and Quern on the second leg. 
Yeah, Ralph Street may, has made a really good start. He has had some good performances at sprints recently. Mm, and then the British team keeps on teasing him that he's a sprinter and he keeps denying <laughs> it. I would say that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just yep. to tease him, of course. Of course. <laughs> but he was um, 20 seconds uh, yesterday in the middle as well. Mm, very good choice here. Now he's up yeah, uh, almost in the lead. We didn't have the time. We didn't get the times at control uh, forty, number forty. Hesitating a little bit here. Hopefully, we'll get the times though as they go um, into the ice hockey stadium. Thankfully, they don't have to run oh, out. Oh, the there ice. we have Casper Fosser Here we already. Casper Fosser. Six oh, seconds behind only. Six here. seconds behind. So we've so caught up 41 40 seconds. seconds, yeah. Oh. And Emil Svensk having only dropped 10 seconds compared to Kubert, but dropped two places. Martin Legborn having a good run too. And yeah, Martin Hubman. You know, uh, Rolf Street, he, he caught 44 seconds on this leg so far. He went out 51 seconds behind. So a great start for him. And I know how much the Brits um, care about the sprint relay. Um, I'm always amazed how much they care about the sprint relay at maybe like, even more so than the individual race. They want to get that success as a team to show that they have kind of depth and that they're a good, na it's a good nation for sprinting as well. Like, they always want to prioritize that and um, try and have a, that good run as a team. But behind Casper Fosser now. Yep, and he has overtaken Matthias Kibbert, so they're 47 mm -hmm. seconds, and those are the and leading group. Oh, look my at goodness that. Me. They are struggling to follow mm. the speed of Kasper Foster here. But those four now back together, maybe Emma Swens catching up a bit, and they're splitting up again as they go towards the next control, the forward control. We'll see maybe if we can yeah, see a lot, because they have to run out of the ice hockey arena in, in the... Uh, towards the western exit, but then they can split and they have to go left or right to the next yeah, control. So I think that's been particularly crucial as well. Actually. Yeah, and you could see the very good route choice there by from Ralph Street. And here, if you go to the left directly, and that's the the place where Kibbutz lost a lot of time when he was backing out there. We have seen that before on earlier legs as well. That it's not a good option. And now this is where you've got B, it's a little bit shorter, so that's advantage there for Norway, for Sweden, Switzerland and Britain having to go a little bit further on that control. And then we see, yeah, they're all heading back down on this street. Here's the leader though, Kasper Fosser of Norway, who won the World Cup overall with two wins here in Italy. Emil Svensk then in second, and yes, Matthias Kibbert with that route choice coming mm -hmm. out of the arena just with a little bit of a mistake. Oh, oh Ralph what Street is Ralph nipping Street doing in there? slightly earlier. And we should get another and time check, I think, here. It's a the gap is growing here. Five seconds now. Yeah, and these four now got a good gap there. 12 seconds then from Street to Regborn, and here's this next gap. I think that was maybe Daniel Hubman there, just cutting in, and Martin Hubman as well.
Albin Riedefeldt for the Sw Swedish fourth team. They have Finland back in eighth, their first team. Ricardo Scaletz, I think, pulling Italy up there. 102 behind after his third place in yesterday's middle distance. Fantastic result for him. Mm. And here we have the leg where we've seen big differences before on earlier legs. Um, still can see Svensk here, Street, Kibbutz. Those three still together, but yeah, that gap now being made by Kasper Fosser. He's going to have run like a whole minute quicker on this, uh, <laughs> this leg. Mm -hmm. If you compare See the to... the difference uh, here? The, the first teams, Norway, Sweden and Great Britain had the A option. Keyboard has the B option, so he has to go a few more meters there. Okay, but here we are through the arena passage. There's the gap. Still mm, about five, about six seconds. Back to Emil Svensk. We'll hand over to Sarah Hagstrom. Ralph Street will hand over to Megan Carter Davis. Matthias Kubert will hand over to Simona Abersold. But now 14 seconds back on Norway. Mm, he has to be careful. Handing over in the lead. He has to be careful not, not let the gap open too much. Of course, Switzerland has a strong last leg runner, but Norway has a one as well. Great Britain has a strong last leg runner. Of course, Sweden has a strong last leg runner. So all of the teams here, I mean, they're really into the f in the fight for their victory. Yeah, when and when on this last leg, you've got, I'd say, you know, Obviously, Simona Abersold is on paper the best of those, but they're not too spread out, those uh, in terms of the expected speed for those last four uh, runners. You've not got someone like Tova Alexanderson starting first. And very different mm -hmm. route there, as we've seen previously. There you go. Bit closer Matthias again. Kibitz, I think Kibitz. a bit better for him, yeah. Yeah. At least he's closer to the other two guys. It will be interesting to see the gap up to Norway. Martin Riekborn. Who's had a bit of a lonely run from the latter half of this course. But they're still within, within sight though, Casper mm. Fosser. And that's really significant. Uh, around six seconds still so let's say gap here 10 seconds 12 seconds something like this so my guess is that they will group up uh, quite early in the race but of course uh, it's still a disadvantage for the teams behind here because they, their last leg runner will have to push much more in the beginning here of the course, which can be a disadvantage when it's coming to a sprint finish. All right, so Norway in the lead, six seconds ahead of Great Britain in second, Sweden in third and Switzerland into fourth place. So six, seven and eight seconds behind respectively. And Jonas, when was the last time a team other than Switzerland or Sweden won a mixed sprint relay? Yeah, it was actually more than five years ago at the World Championships in Sweden 2016, where we had Denmark winning. Uh, one of the teams that was very big in sprint relays for many years. Uh, we all remember when my Alm was there and dominating the sprint relay more <laughs> relays more or less by herself. So uh, yeah, it was a, it's a long time ago. So it's it's cool to see. It's nice to see that we have so many teams here up in the lead. Sweden to Carolyn Olsen then on that last leg and we've got Switzerland, I think three here with uh, Daniel Hubman having a great run there handing over 
to Marion Aby. Uh, Italy then in uh, seventh place. That's fantastic a leg from Ricardo Scalette there. Uh, handing over and Sweden four as well, completing that top eight, 121 behind Sweden four with Eleanor Chenard on the last leg. But really, we'd expect the top three to be the medals to go in this group of four mm, Norway, Switzerland, Great Britain, and Sweden. Mm, and as I said before, my guess is now that the teams behind, especially Simona Ebersold, will push very hard here on the um, first controls. Maybe even over push it a little bit to close the gap, to uh, let the runner in front of you feel that you're just behind and that you're strong. Uh, it's kind of a tactical game. Maybe she is opening the race harder than she would if it would be an individual sprint, just to, yeah, to, to show that she is there. And of course, the others, they if they don't want to lose contact here, it's very crucial in the beginning. So it will be a tough start, especially for uh, Switzerland, Great Britain and Sweden. And maybe this could be an advantage in the very end of the race for Norway. Yeah, exactly. If you kind of almost let them catch you, just keep running your own race, you kind of know that's going to happen. And keep I mean, something in the tank for that last loop. I mean, she isn't letting them catch. Them. No. She's she's opening, but she's opening as she would do in the sprint race. And that I I guess the others they are almost forced to over push it a little a little bit, and maybe they will have to pay it for it in in the very end if it comes to a sprint finish. Well, we can only hope. But uh, it's been one of the closest sprint relays we've seen in a long time between all these different nations, and. Uh, all within you know 10 15 seconds of each other going into the fourth leg is fantastic i mean we've seen a lot this season and, and a couple of seasons recently the likes of say tova alexander just making a huge gap if you look back to um, the european championships particularly just making a huge gap but it's great to see uh, all of these teams battling it out um, together and putting in great performances we've not seen really that, that many mistakes maybe a few route choice mistakes but looking pretty good mm, and here you can see that switzerland has a slightly shorter option here to control a so she can kind of cut the corner mm, looks like as if no, hope Norway didn't follow to the A option there, but uh, I mean the GPS is so inaccurate here that it's very hard to say at which control they are. So very decisive part coming now where they have the route choice around the arena here. Let's see, maybe not the best option for Norway to go around no. there. Great Britain following. Andrina Benjaminsen, Sara Akström going to the west as uh, Simona Abersold. I think that's a good option, but let's see if it's paying off. Of course, we see that Great Britain and Norway, they have the B option, so it's it's okay to go up there, it would be worse if they had the A option, because now you can see they can cut up here directly. Down there you see Abersold. And it looks as if she is going around to the left. We know from the leg before that it was faster. We have seen Ralph Street to go to the right, so uh, it's a good option to go to, ri to the right. We haven't seen Carter yeah, Davis looks, there. Yeah, it looks a little bit as if uh, Hongström was struggling with the speed more than the others. But she's made the good good choice here to the eighth control, mm -hmm. though. Exactly what we want to see heading this way around the uh, ice hockey arena. But thank you that you can you can win more time there to the right if you go if you have control A before. 
And you see that Norway, Great Britain, they go the same way as Abersolt. So it's only Sweden going around, and she had B. Ah, doing a oh. small mistake here. Uh, it's only a couple see, of seconds. But maybe we'll see, but I think she should, could well catch up some time yeah. here. Or catch up a place, because I think she was in fourth. I think she will come in there between Switzerland, Norway and Great Britain. Yep. Maybe. Yep, pretty yes, much indeed. exactly that. And then the next route choice, of course, is coming out of this uh, and do you see, yeah. arena. You see but that Megan Carter-Davis is losing contact here. But now, crucially, we've got Abasold has actually caught up Benjaminson, though. That's really crucial. These two together, having been um, mm -hmm. six, and you, uh, in fact, you eight see seconds that down. You can see that Abasold really wants to go up to the lead. Now, of course, it's hard to overtake someone here. You don't want to go out on the ice. But yeah, punching exactly the same time. Hagstrom only those two seconds. Really good um, route choice there. Mm -hmm. I think Megan Carter Davis just making both kind of wrong route choices into seven and then into uh, eight as well. 13 mm -hmm. seconds yeah. down. Hagstrom won eight seconds by going around to the right there. Then I think we're looking for Sweden. Two, next in. Here she is, Caroline Olsen. Olsen. And now we wait to this control outside mm. the And they the all arena. come from the direction we wouldn't like to have them from. Is it four teams or are there only three teams? There's three teams Mary's there, I can't Carter see Carter Davis, Davis but... But so that's well. a chance for her. If she took the other route, then she might be able to catch a few seconds here. Didn't see her. So maybe the gap's just too big. Now they're splitting up to different um, four kings. That's They have to do it, I guess. Let's see. Not yet there. It's to the neck to the control that follows after this one. There will be a four king. And at least Switzerland and Sweden have different forkings there. And Benjamin's has the same forking as Sarah Ockström. But it looks like it's pretty easy for Benjamin to go with the pace of Simone Abersold there. Mm. And you could see that all four of them went around back there. Would have been the chance for Megan Carter Davis to get back into the group. You see this uh, forking here won't really split up the group. It's uh, not a big difference if you have B or A. You more or less have to pass there anyway uh, at control A. Mm, a different route here for Akström going up there. It'll be I very interesting to see. Grass. We'll see what happens. Yeah, let's see who is there coming is. up here first to this control. Others we should see approaching from cutting through from the left. Mm -hmm. Oh, but this is good. They're Very coming good. Here. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think she's caught up a little bit of time, maybe. But where is but Benjamin Minson getting ahead. Yeah, where, where is, is Absolut? There was something here that I saw is. with her she GPS tracking. Time. But yeah. 12 seconds behind. That's quite a lot now. Mm. Now it will be brutal for her. It's very. I mean, it's towards the end. She has to get in contact again. The gap is 12 seconds. Oh, starting to be tired there. You can see that she... was a mistake running out there from 
the A option at control 13. Yeah, maybe didn't see the wall, it was uncrossable. Mm -hmm. Now maybe she's, of course, a bit running out of time here. She has to get in contact soon again. Again, we have this forking, Norway going, ah, Norway going out to the top, which we think is slower. Yeah. They should go kind of wiggle the way through, go actually quite far off the mm. line because then you don't have to go down those steps and make all those turns. So good for Sweden, oh. for Sarah Hagstrom again, and all oh, Switzerland so. also going up. So goodness me, this could be looking good for Sarah Hagstrom. British team also going up. So I think advantage Sweden here. Yeah, if she gets it right out from the kind of buildings here, it's hard to say where she's going. Well, we she will see them at control 17, just to get that indication yeah. as to what that route choice has done. But I think going down those steps is slow, very slow. I mean, it was five or six seconds, the difference there uh, on an earlier on the man's leg. Here they come oh. together. They are together, there completely is together. Abersolz. So I would guess that Benjaminsen has the quicker place just from how seeing them out there, but it's gone has gone further, but they are exactly together. Mm. Be very interesting to get the splits at control 17. Here we are. Here we Huxtrum go. Huxtrum and they Benjamin together. Sit together. It looks very good for the two of them. Very good. You very Switzerland. The back. They were about 12 seconds behind, I think, and now it's more. Oh, she loses time here. Mm -hmm. That's not good for Switzerland. I think that's too much, 20 seconds here for this last loop, so I guess it's between Sarah Hockström and Andrine Benjaminsen, and maybe, maybe we'll see a new winner here at the sprint relay for the first time in five years. Maybe we will. There is Megan Carter-Davis just through now into fourth place. It's still dropping time now on the leaders, Hockström and Benjaminsen, but consolidating that fourth place, and... Too much, I think, for 13 seconds to catch up on Abasold. We'll have to see Abasold making a mistake. Carolyn Olsen, Olsen has just also punched there. 30, 52 seconds. But there is this route choice on control 18 to 19. And I think if you go up, mm -hmm. it is not quite as good as we've seen that from uh, Simona Abasold. So mm, we're no, waiting there we're at control 19. Let's see who's coming first here. Still Sarah Hockström. They're still together. And the gap is not getting less here. She's continues to lose time, I guess. So I would count, count out Switzerland from the fight for the victory if the others are not missing the next control. Can't see Carter Davis coming from that direction. Oh, there maybe there here she, she is. Yeah. But again, I think losing some time there as well. And now let's wait and see who's coming first here. It is Norway. Andrea Benjaminson from there. And she looks much stronger ah, here physically. She does. This is quite a big gap already. Say it's around four seconds. This looks good for Norway. Looks really good for Norway with only one more control and then the finish to go. We're just looking behind to see if we can see the next place team. Mm. And now it's the situation we were talking about in the beginning. Maybe Benjaminsen has a bit more energy left yes. here for the last controls because she didn't have to push too hard in the beginning. And this looks very promising now for Norway. Very, very promising for Norway. And Andrina Benjaminsen 
is going to anchor the Norwegian team home to be the first team other than Sweden or Switzerland to win a mixed sprint relay since 2016. It feels like it's been coming for them for a long while now, but fantastic result there for Norway mm -hmm. to take the win today. Victoria Hayes, Dabjornstad, Adam Heimdahl, what a whopping leg from Kasper Fosser, leg three, and uh, Andrina Benjaminsen. Really, really mature and disciplined race for her. Really, really great stuff. And we've got a fight now here, actually, for maybe on for third place. Because uh, Carolyn Olsen has been working really hard to catch up to Megan Carter-Davis. And the two of them are actually quite close now to Simona Abersold. But Abersold will take Switzerland at home into third place. Having gone out pretty much neck and, uh, well, what she out, she was at eight seconds behind. She had caught up Banyu Minson making some mistakes. Sweden too, Carolyn Olsen with a great last leg. And uh, Great Britain fifth with Megan Carter Davis making a few mistakes towards the end. Theresiana Shikova then is there for the Czech Republic, I think maybe catching up a few places. Uh, but I mean, Norway. Yeah, the first team to win a mixed sprint relay in other than Sweden and Switzerland in five years. And it really has felt like it's been coming for a long time for Norway. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen that at the World Championships. They had really not the best start there. They were two minutes behind after two legs. And in the end, it was only 26 seconds. So it's for them, it was very important to get a good start today. And we had actually a good start. Um, I mean, Victoria has been since she lost a little bit of time. She lost about... Uh, a a bit more than half a minute compared to to Alexanderson, but um, that's a good start because uh, she was maybe running against the strongest runner in the field. And then uh, on the second leg, they were um, not losing too much time either, f 15 more seconds. And then you had Kasper Fosser and uh, Andrine Benjamins, and they turned around this relay for them. Uh, Fosser with an incredible run, and uh, also Benjaminsen did her job very well. We were talking yeah. about it. She lost a bit of time in the beginning, but um, it's hard to go out and like hold the gap if the others can see you from the beginning. So they were closing the gap, but they might have burned a little bit too much energy. Uh, so she was the strongest physically in the end. And uh, yeah, a great first victory here uh, from a team not coming from Switzerland or Sweden in many years. <laughs> Oh, we've got some good fights on here for some of the other places. Great to see this. I think Lotta Kohola here for uh, Finland. Finland 2. Just managing to edge out Norway. Second Norwegian team. Maria Olausen and Denmark as well, of course. And yeah, and, and I guess we, we, we saw mistakes from those three teams who were trying to catch up well, maybe not mistakes from um, Sarah Hagstrom, but from those teams trying to catch up uh, Norway at the, at the on the last leg of this relay. It's not just that then you're suffering physically at the end. It's also mm. you've got that fatigue yeah. and you're, you're making mistakes as well as just losing time. Yeah, but it's a little bit of both. I mean, why are you doing mistakes? Maybe you're forced into a situation you wouldn't want to be. Um, if you have to over push in the beginning, it's harder to make good decisions in the end because you might have, yeah, you might struggling, uh, might be struggling physically, and then it's of course harder to see the root choices. And maybe I, I mean, I guess in the very end, uh, the reason why Switzerland is losing time at almost every root choice is because she has to try everything to win the race, and uh, she wasn't able to beat this team today in the end. And congratulations! What a thrilling, uh, thrilling day! Tell us about your last leg. <laughs> yeah, it was exciting. I uh, didn't expect Kasper to change over in lead. I know he's very strong, but we were a little bit behind, so that's what I expected. So I really had to be focused and uh, confident and uh, do my best in the last leg. And Kasper, uh, the winner from yesterday. Uh, Tell us about your leg. You were behind uh, Sweden first. Yeah, I, uh, 
I just try to focus on myself and uh, and uh, trying to run uh, or to push all the way and uh, and yeah, it was a really good race for me. Absolutely, I uh, felt like I always uh, I was always ahead and uh, I. Uh, Always felt like I I was in control and uh, and the legs were great so yeah perfect. <laughs> and uh, Victoria, you were on the first leg. Can you? What are your feelings right now? <laughs> oh, I'm very happy. Uh, I'm uh, very proud of my team and uh, I needed to push everything I could to give them uh, a good first leg. <laughs> and Odin Heimdall, uh, tell us about your leg. Yeah, I got a. Uh, Got a great, uh, great start and uh, felt felt a bit tired, but uh, yeah, it was a good performance and it's amazing with the first place today. Uh, congratulations, Norway! Thank you. Thank you. So congratulations, yes, in a way. We will have a little look through. This is the uh, last leg. You can see Benjaminson just going out there ahead. And maybe we can have a little look more at how Abasold was able to catch. Mm, you could see that uh, it's more or less the same route choices uh, they're taking in the beginning, but Abasold running slightly faster. Of course, uh, we're talking about this GPS not too accurate here. Then at control five, there there was a bit of an advantage for Switzerland. She had to control the A control there, so she could kind of cut the corner a little bit. It was the first time we've seen her kind of in the lead. Different route choices here out from control six. Um, Switzerland, Sweden with the A option, Benjaminsen with the B option, then they were all running, no, two of them running to the left of the hockey arena and uh, that's the point where we saw that Hagström really was able to close the gap and get between Switzerland, Norway and also Great Britain, um, just a little bit behind there, and then here uh, kind of the part where Switzerland started to lose contact after control 11, uh, especially then at control 13 when she must have done a little mistake. We'll see there at control 13 where Switzerland has the A option and the other two teams have the B option and Sweden uh, taking another route choice here. Going up and here, in the way, somewhere here, she must have done a mistake. It's hard to see from the GPS what it was hesitating at the control, but that's really the point where the others got this 12 seconds gap, and then you could see quite many bad decisions following here from 15 to 16. It wasn't too bad for Benjaminson to go up there. Uh, she was together with Hagström at control 16. Maybe that Hagström didn't really find the fastest way out there between the two controls. And then from here it was the fight between the Swedish and the Norwegian team for the victory. And yeah, you could see that Benjaminsen was slightly stronger physically and just pushing away from Sara Hagström on the last meters here. There at this point there would have been the chance between 19 and 20 for Hawksrum to go a different way to pass control 21 almost and come from the other direction to control 20. But in the end we had the Norwegian victory and Swedish second place and Switzerland on third almost caught in the end. Of course she didn't have to push too hard here in the very end of the course but almost caught by Sweden and Great Britain. Yep, so we can look there at those final results. And the gap, just those six seconds was the gap between one and two, but much more significant back down to third, fourth and fifth in the end. Having seen those four, la four teams go out very, very close together at the beginning of the fourth leg. Mm. And I mean, 
we have been talking a lot, uh, a lot about uh, Kasper Fosser this week and uh, also today and he had such a strong race today. I really wouldn't be surprised if he would uh, show up very high up the result list in individual sprints in the future as well. We haven't really seen that so far, but I mean, what, what he was showing today was just... Uh, yeah, it was just great, and I mean, if he would do that in uh, an individual sprint, he can, uh, yeah, he can win such races as well, for sure. Well, we have got our very first ever sprint-only world championships, of course, coming up um, next year in Denmark, having been delayed a couple of years, so. We'll see what he's able to do that. But let's, of course, have our flower ceremony then for the top three teams from today's sprint relay to end this World Cup 2021. Of course, third place, Paolo Gross, Joey Haddon, Matthias Kibert and Simona Abersold mm -hmm. were in third place. And the same what, I mean, here. you've got to say a great second leg for Joey Haddon. Yeah, and also I have to say, I mean, the same uh, as we said about Victoria Hester Björnstad for Norway. It was kind of the same situation for Paula Gross on the first leg. She got into the team. She had to fight against maybe the best runner uh, in the field here against the world champion. And she lost about yeah half a minute. And I think that was a good start for Switzerland. Uh, it was very important for the Swiss team to not lose too much time on the first leg and I mean they got in contact and they were in touch later on so she did a great job here as well. Yep, absolutely. So we had, of course, a Sweden one leading after the first leg. Tova Alexanderson, Isaac von Krusenfreiner, Emil Svensk, Sarah Hagström. Maybe a few mistakes in the, that second leg for von Krusenfreiner allowing the likes of Joey Haddon to catch up. But the winners today, of course, Norway, Victoria Heistad Bjornstad, Adam Heimdahl, Kasper Fosser and Andrina Benjaminsen. And finally, finally splitting up those two other teams who've been battling out for so long at the top of the sprint relay, always taking first and second place. It was great to see Norway have that success and yeah, I think that just bodes well for those World Championships next year in Denmark. The fact that we've said for a few years now the Norwegians really seem to have, in a way that the Swedish and the Swiss haven't, you've got a lot more specialising in either sprints or in um, forest, I think. And maybe that is paying off. It would be great to see that, the kind of more of yep. that depth coming out in, uh, in the sprint world champs. Yeah, and I mean the big difference for, you see there that uh, Benjaminsen has some problems with an ankle from yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think the big difference for Norway is that they now finally, or yeah, after many years, they have two runners that are really, I mean, you could really, they're really, really sticking out. I mean, we have Kasper Foster, he can make a big impact on his leg. And you have also Andrina Benjaminsen who can win the race on the last leg and that's the difference compared to earlier they had quite okay sprinters i mean they were up on the podium before they had runners like Östen Kvalöstebö, uh, Silja Kralyaren and other sprinters but then now they have really runners they can make a difference we have the same in Switzerland we have the same in Sweden and now Norway has it as well so it will of course for us that's perfect because now it's exciting at sprint relays with more than only two teams yeah uh, hopefully it's going to be very exciting once we come to those sprint world championships next year but that is it for the world cup uh, 2021 we'll be back for another set of exciting races next year but it's been a fantastic one taking us from switzerland czech republic sweden and now finishing off with this world cup final in italy with some great performances some great races and we'll hopefully be back to do it all again next year we'll see you then see you then <laughs>